Hello, everyone. Wait. No, right. Yep. Okay. Audio works. Good. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Nanolith the Dawn. Remain your host. All right. Let's just start over. <sighs> I hate to prove she's point, but yes, this was a little bit off. One sec. Hello everyone, welcome to Nanolids at Dawn, Exhibition Matches, I'm your host Shadow Fury or Dominic, Dominic or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer, and we're going to be having some Exhibition Matches, starting with a match between Rymark and Pet Turtle on Shimmer Shore, because I just, you know, you don't really see enough C, and it almost feels like no one plays C, I don't want to see what people are doing when they play C, so let's see what these two do when they play C, both of them going for the shipyard, because that's Kind of what you do. I mean, Hovercraft does have a lot going for it, but on the other hand, Shipyard is really designed for the sea. That's what you do. You build the ships, and those ships do stuff. Because, I mean, the entire counter structure is built around that. Hovercraft, for instance, I mean, you got some weirdness with the way that daggers operate. I've heard Halberd Claymore is the way to go, but that is also kind of limited, because there's a lot of things that can be done to just get through that using ships. I mean, heck, Cutter's got a lot of problems with that. So, that is what Rymark's going for. Early rating on the Cutters. Pet Turtle getting a couple up themselves, but more focused on the economy. Getting very early Mariner, followed by a couple of Cutters, mostly being used for, well, raiding. Checking things out. Will be used for defense, ultimately, because of the Cutters coming in from Rymark. But, that will be fine. Question, of course, is where is Rymark going with this? And the answer is they're doing the same thing, but they have gotten a lot more distraction on Pet Turtle. So, right now, it's a bit easier for them to build up. And they do have the Mariner going forward, actually pretty far forward. Not an unusual setup for someone in the bottom left corner, but still, that is going to be a little bit harder to defend than otherwise. But yeah, that is, that is pretty typical. That's what usually goes on in this map, I found. People build up to the left side of the map because that's, I mean, it actually is kind of out of the way. It's certainly not in the main path of anything going here. But Pet Turtle has successfully defended getting their cutters up, and Rymark, on the other hand, getting over a Corsair because that's what you do. When you got a bunch of cutters to deal with, you get a Corsair. Yeah, this is... Oh, hi. Smash Bruh. This game is on Steam. It is free! I mean, you can donate if you'd like, but it is free. You don't need to pay anything to, pay to play it. But it is appreciated if you donate to help support the server costs. Anyway, back to the game. Rymark getting over around to Pet Turtle, who... By the way, it's only just now started expanding. And first expansion already being taken out by, or not taken out as so much as harassed by a cutter. But at the same time, Pet Turtle is in a reasonably good spot to defend themselves. The cutters aren't going to be able to deal with the commander, so that's going to be fine. And the cutters over here from Pet Turtle are just pushing away Rymark. So right now, Rymark mostly just winning on the fact that they have a lot more money to work with. But that's about it. I mean, really, they have the money, but they haven't really got much else right now. They haven't gotten an army, but they will. And they are getting territory, but right now, actually, these cutters can do a lot of damage. They're coming around the north side. They will be pa passing by Rymarks, although it looks like they are more concerned about defense. Wasn't entirely sure, but they are definitely more concerned about defense, which kind of sucked for them, because had they known, but they don't, and they're not going for it. And I can't say I blame them. Actually, what do they know? They don't have any knowledge of that expansion at all. No radar up front, so that makes sense. At the same time, though, they have a lot of cutters. I don't see them faring especially well against the Corsair, but I do see the Corsair dying. I mean, actually, you know what? It's 13 cutters. This could very well do the trick. The Corsair won't be able to get one shot off, and then it'll just get disarmed. So yeah, that Corsair's done. Only managing to kill one one cutter before being taken out itself. And that's got to be embarrassing. Another Corsair is coming in, but it'll just suffer the same fate. Well, two more Corsairs coming in. Actually, they do have a bit more of a chance if they come in together. Especially as Pet Turtle does have a lot of their cutters all bunched up, but clearly they're not... Pet Turtle's not too worried about the cutters. Pet Turtle's more worried about making sure that they actually get everything in position, because... Like, this is a retreat, this is a regroup. Pet Turtle will be able to take out both Corsairs, though. I like how they are spacing out their cutters. Like, they're close... The cutters are close enough that they can get the shots in, but not so close that the Corsairs completely wreck them. However, the problem here is that they are... St the Corsairs are still wrecking the cutters. The second Corsair does get disarmed, but not before taking out about half the, cor the cutters in the fleet. And at the same time, though, Pet Turtle is using this as a massive opportunity to expand. And these Corsairs going down means this Mariner can just do whatever the heck it wants. There's nothing going on the eastern side of the map. 
and Pet Turtle knows that Rymark has basically been spending all of their army to try to get rid of these cutters, and yes, about half the cutters did go down, but cutters are cheap. Cutters are 70, or, yeah, 70 metal compared to 220 for a Mariner. Now, to be fair, those Mariners made cost. Barely. The second Mariner, the first ones didn't. The first one killed one. The second killed, like, six or seven between them, so it just barely worked out. And that's a Ryun. You don't want to just make cost. You want it to do a lot more damage than just make cost. And Seawolf apparently has been spotted because Pet Turtle already in the Hunters out just to deal with it. Although, right now Pet Turtle... Yeah, they got to repeat building the Hunters and, of course, on Cutters. Makes sense. Oof. That's risky. I'm actually not sure why the Cutters are here. I mean, okay, I get why the Cutters are here. It's easier to group them together. But two Cutters went down to a Seawolf as the Hunter was dealing with it. On the upside, though, the Hunter was not damaged by the Seawolf. So I can see where that comes in. You keep the Cutters nearby, and that Hunter basically gets a screen. You lose a couple cutters in the process, sure, but again, hunters are, well, they're a bit more valuable against the sea wolves. Not much more expensive, but they are what you need to beat sea wolves. If you lose that hunter, that sea wolf is just going to run havoc, or just going to wreak havoc. It's going to run roughshod over your forces. And again, the Corsairs managing to get quite a few cutters down, not before going down themselves, but additional Corsair reinforcements are around the back, so that will still be able to keep themselves in the game as the sea wolf comes in and starts to push this. Rymark should be able to convert this assault into probably a base assault. I don't see Pet Turtle changing up too much, adding more cutters into their fleet, but not going for, say, Marin well, Mistral or getting Corsairs of their own. Same time over on the north side of the map, Pet Turtle trying to push that expansion. They do still have the economic advantage, but they can't go too far forward. If they go too far forward, the commander ends up underwater and unable to do anything. So that Mariner, in a nice spot, just out of the way. Avoiding getting wrecked too hard. Or at all, really. This one, though, Pet Turtle, really relying on those cutters. They've been relying on the cutters this entire game, and while I admit it has been working out for them, I think this is where the... This is the end of the line. This is totally the end of the line. The Hunter's able to get rid of one of the Sea Wolves, but otherwise, that is Pet Turtle's entire fleet and their eastern expansion. A couple urchins doing what they can to keep the Mariner alive, but it's not going to help. The Sea Wolf goes down, sure. But those Corsairs, they aren't going to last. Or they are going to last. They aren't going to be too dismayed. One goes down, sure. The second one might go down, and it does indeed. But that's fine. That was totally worth it. Getting rid of the Mariner, getting the expansion over the eastern side of the map, getting rid of Pet Turtle's entire economic advantage right there and then. That was a nice, efficient blow. As it stands, though, Rymark is... Man, they actually, they're, they're very much ahead right now. Now the Corsair coming in for Pet Turtle. Pet Turtle deciding to answer in kind, but unfortunately Corsairs do not hit underwater. The Sea Wolf is a really good counter to that. While Pet Turtle does have a few more forces coming around the side to help deal with the Sea Wolves, it's not quick enough. So at least the above water forces are being dealt with. Pet Turtle does have the defense on that. But this is what I was talking about the screen earlier. The Hunter goes down in two to the Sea Wolf. That's why we saw the Cutters and Hunter go together earlier, because otherwise that Hunter will die and the Sea Wolves will just destroy everything. Exactly as predicted. And with that, Rymark is able to take the vast majority of the map, turning that into 10 metal per second economic advantage, with Pet which Pet Turtle is going to have a tough time dealing with. There's enough reclaim in the map that Pet Turtle should be able to get back in with that, but Rymark could very well take the center reclaim. Not a whole lot has been done in Rymark's base, but this center area is basically Rymark's. Pet Turtle is not contesting it at all, and Rymark is projecting so much force there, I don't see Pet Turtle even be able to go there. And this eastern side, same thing. Pet Turtle has a bit of reclaim over here, but that's going to be at some cost, trying to deal with all the sea wolves coming in. So I'm curious what Pet Turtle is going to try to do from here. They only have the one Mariner. So I don't expect we're going to be seeing a whole lot of attempts at taking this. I mean, as it is, right, we're just seeing attempts to deal with the sea wolf Corsair mix. Which again, I'm a bit surprised we aren't seeing any Mistrals, or sea wolves. Actually, now we're seeing the sea wolves. That makes a lot of sense. Curious where those things would be coming in, and now they are, but unfortunately, not quickly enough. Corsairs won't be able to do anything. The one Sea Wolf that Rymark has will go. Oh, I shouldn't say one Sea Wolf. The first Sea Wolf will go down for sure, but then the second Sea Wolf is going to be able to just do its job. And Pet Turtle realizes there's nothing they can do from here. Too much pressure on their base. Still would have liked to see the Sea Wolf earlier, but overall, that did that did look to me as a game decided largely by unit composition. Like Rymark and Pet Turtle had even economies the entire game. In fact, Pet Turtle was slightly ahead for quite a bit of it. Just came down to the fact that Pet Turtle was focusing heavily on cutters, which were doing a good job early on with their numbers. 
But once the numbers dwindled down, it became increasingly difficult for them to deal with the Corsairs, and no sea wolves were built to help deal with the Corsairs. Mistrals would have been okay. I think I might have overshot it with the Mistrals. I think Mistrals wouldn't have been the best option with the sea wolves, but sea wolves would have been a good option. Like sea wolf hunter, maybe hunter cutter, just to have the, or sea wolf hunter corsair, probably wouldn't have been a bad idea. I mean, it's basically what Rymark was doing. But you know, the hunters would have dealt with the sea wolves. The sea wolves would have helped deal with the corsairs, and the corsairs in the top would have been a good screening force to help deal with basically everything else. And it would have kept the corsairs at bay if Rymark decided to switch over to cutters or hunters themselves. It would have helped with that. But. Anyway, that was that. So, hope you enjoyed that. We're having another match in a couple of seconds, or a couple of minutes. That will be Golda versus Dimefriend on Onyx Cauldron. Which, I'm curious how that's going to work out, because Onyx Cauldron is a map that... It's a weird map, because it does tend to break down into a few discrete sections. Not to mention, it's also a map where you see bizarre combinations of factories. Like, Hovercraft versus Cloakie is a matchup you pretty much only see on Onyx Cauldron. So yeah, that is going to be that in a couple seconds, so stay tuned.